Welcome everybody uh, to the Birds of a Feather, the Lessons Tool. Now, how did you do that? My name is Neil Caden. I'm your moderator for this session. Uh, presenting is Tony DeVore of Ohio Valley University. Tony is the chair of the School of Graduate Education, where she teaches in the online Masters of Curriculum and Instruction program. She also teaches curriculum and technology courses for undergraduate pre-service teachers. As a former junior high school teacher, 20 years, and school district math science curriculum supervisor, 18 years, she brings experience in public schools to the higher education arena. As an avid Sakai user, she works to improve her use of the learning management system as a tool for her and her students. So welcome, Tony. Thank you. I'm going to start, Tony and I discussed this, we're going to start off with a really brief little poll here. Um, if you see in the uh, corner, there's uh, in the chat window, there's a link to a poll on your level of experience. And what I'm going to do is share my screen so you can see what that should look like. Hopefully, everybody sees my screen now. I can see so it. If you wouldn't mind taking a, great. If you wouldn't mind uh, taking the poll. If you don't see the poll, please put it in the chat window. Also, I want to mention that as we go through the, uh, this is a very interactive presentation, so Tony will be, um, you know, soliciting your your input and feel free to ask questions um, and participate uh, through the chat window and uh, also. You should have, if you have audio on your computer, you should be able to um, speak up. Let me see if we've got any results here. Okay. We've got two people since we have a small group. <coughs> Only two that have responded. So it looks like of the people on the call, uh, they tend to be more moderate and experienced users. I think that will be useful information for Tony. If we have other people who join later, then uh, we'll not necessarily know what their experience level is, but thanks for that input. Okay, I'm going to close out my screen and make uh, Tony the presenter. Hey, Tony. All right, thank you. Give me just a second to share my desktop. And I have a very short PowerPoint just to go over a few things to, to let you know what I have done with um, Just I think my computer's acting a little slow from beginning. There we go. Um, I started teaching at Ohio Valley four years ago, and that was before there was a lessons tool. And it was very difficult for me at first to make a transition from face-to-face -face instructing, and I had taught several adjunct courses for them uh, in the past. But going to a complete online environment, I thought, well, how am I going to get my students to know what their assignments are and how we're going to do things, et cetera. So they introduced me to Sakai. And at that time, there was the assignments tool on the left, the forms tool, the test and quizzes tool. And these were things that, that we used to, to teach the classes, so to speak. When I first started, when, when lessons first started, excuse me, I was thrilled. This was going to be my canvas, so to speak. I would then be able to start on a lessons page and put all of the components that I wanted in the class there. Now, when you, it, it looked as if most of you are experienced users, so you know what this page is and, and how it can be used. For me, I usually start most of my classes, and this was just a screenshot from one of my classes, um, I usually start with a little table that gives them the week and the date and the goals and the objectives and the reading assignment, etc., when things are due, so that I can provide for them uh, an easy access tool that with a glance they can just see what's needed. Um, I use this almost every week in my classes. 
oops, let me go that screen. I use this almost every week in my classes, and my students in evaluations have said this is probably one of the most helpful things I do. I'm not real big on images and uh, things of that nature, just because my students are usually teachers that are working teaching full-time, and they really want to get to the meat of the issue or of the assignments. So this is the way we pre I present it to them. Uh, the, you all know this if you're experienced users. You start with uh, select add content, and then you go from there. So uh, you just add the different elements from this. On here, I have added a link to a video. I have a link to an analysis, analysis, which is an assignment, and then there's a forum for this particular lesson. And what I like about this is everything is right there in front of the students, one-stop shopping. They can go right to those different components and take care of the class, the assignments, and any uh, assessments that might be, be done. I'm going to drop out of the PowerPoint if I can and ask you if we could, are there any questions about what I've done or uh, where you want me to go? I have also set up, I pulled up my Sakai pages from some of my classes that I've taught in the past, if you'd like to see what some of my students did on an assignment. Questions or comments, please. Thanks. Is it Diad? Okay, let me go. Student assignments would be great. I really like this. Um, I like this feature to be able to put the assignments in the forums on each page. It just makes it so much easier for the students, I think. Let me go to the Sakai page while I still have the display. Can everybody see? Neil, I'm depending on you to, to see the answers. Can everybody see OVEDUC 625 Fall of 13? Neil, can you see that? Uh oh. Anybody there? Sorry, oh, yes, I okay. was on mute. I'm, I'm here and I see it. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it scared me. This is my first virtual conference, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm a bit nervous, please overlook my stumbling. This is the home page for a class that I taught last fall. Okay, and you can see the weeks down the side. Um, one of the assignments of the students was in week 12 and 13, and this was a technology class where they would go in and um, they had to take a page. You can add a student page, student content uh, onto the forums, which I think is just a wonderful option. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. Uh, add student content is the tool. So I added this student content tool, and then some of my students, Get the tool out of there. Maybe. Hmm. Doesn't want to go out of there. There it goes. Just a little slow today. It's cold here in Pennsylvania. My students had a variety of pages. This Their assignment was, it was kind of a problem-based learning activity. They were going to apply for an online teaching job, and they had to demonstrate to me they had to demonstrate their ability to use a learning management system. And these were the students in my classes. And I do have permission to use, to use their, their pages. I asked before I, before I did it. Um, John Dennis is one of our students who is a, um, had been a former science teacher and became a nurse, uh, and does a lot of teaching in the nursing profession. His, and he's also an avid astronomer. This was the page that the student created. With very little help from me, um, we went over some of the tools. One of the previous assignments was to look at the tools and investigate the tools on an ad content page for themselves. Um, they had a rubric that would help them 
uh, create their page. And, and this is what John did. Notice that he has his objectives. He has an image that, that with um, a picture from uh, an image by Bruce Gary that he had permission to use. Uh, in, in this case, they couldn't add assignments, but I told them to use the edit text feature to create different assignments. And on his, it actually linked to a new page. So going back to that was um, uh, he was able to use that to add the things in that I normally added. Uh, and he had um, a variety of things. This is a video that we won't go to because somebody accidentally added content to his page. But this was one of the, uh, one of the samples that my student had done. Okay, let me go back. Now, on my home page, I can see all the scores, but they could not. Um, they could only see their score. So it gives me the opportunity to grade them on their student content right there in the content. Um, let's take a look at... I'm not seeing it. We'll take a look at Tara's. And they had due dates and they had their online research. Um, this is a special education teacher. And these were the, the types of things that she was having the students do for her class. Um, and then there was a place also for student comments to make. Okay, I'm going to back out of this and go back to Big Blue Button. Are there any questions? Can students see and edit other students' pages? No, they cannot. They can see the other students' pages. I'm not sure how the video, the other video got on there, and I really didn't investigate that further. No, normally they are not allowed to change anything else uh, on another student's page. Any other questions? I can edit the student pages, but they cannot. Would some of you like to share some of the activities that you've done with the lessons tool? I'm here to learn just like you are. Would you like for me to demonstrate how I go about starting a page? So you use the lessons tool as a module type thing? Is that what I understand? Very good. How long a time period does your page last? What For what time period does it represent? Oh, one week, two. Okay. And what type of class is it? Speech and education, very good. Anybody else care to care to chime in? On the lesson page, I place I usually do text that says assignment. Hold on, let me go back to Sakai. I'm going to to take to a Sakai page and uh, let me see this is an old class so it's not active let me see if the lesson tool is hiding down here no it's not hiding down there let me um, let me go to a current class and I think there's a lesson tool hiding down here at the bottom. This is my face-to-face -face class. And in it, I just use it to make sure the students know what's going on, what, you know, what we're doing this week, a heads up. Um, an interesting uh, snippet about that is I went on 
the page for yesterday. So that class meets Tuesday, Thursday. And I put down what I wanted them to do for missing class on Thursday because I'm out of town. And they, uh, they went, they had gotten on the night before to check to see what we were doing and thought everything was due for them Tuesday morning. So they were way ahead of the game. Here's where I start. Here's my ad content. Um, one of the things I do sometimes is I click on add content and then I add text. Seems to be running a little slow. It may be because I've got several buttons open. There's the add text. Um, one of the, uh, one of my difficulties that I deal with is when I type on my page, it looks like it's Times New Roman. But when I publish it, it would not be. So I always come up here, click on the, the little icon up here, select my font and my size. And I usually try with 14. Oops, that seems awfully small for 14. I'll try 16. Let's make it 18. I think you all have a small screen. Hope that's better. And um, I put any of the text. I want in here, my little table that I have, I usually have it, uh, I go back to the source for, I, I use source code to, to drop it in from another class. I don't have that saved, but if somebody wants to see it, I can demonstrate it. I can come in and I can add a an assignment to this. My assignments that are listed are right here. I'm going to add this one. This is something they're actually working on. So I just select that assignment. It pops up. Now, normally I would go in and add text and say assignment above that. Um, I can come in and I can add a forum. And again, I usually add, whoops, I usually add um, and add a forum topic. My forums are right here, so I'm just going to say add a forum on Chapter 1. And you selected item. So... And again, I would normally put text in, in those, above those things so they would know what they were doing. I use a little bit of color. I use, um, if you go back to, um, I'll go to another current class and go to one of the boxes. Notice that uh, uh, here I use bold highlights and things so I can get so that they can follow it across. I can also see where I have assignments and forums. That gives them the opportunity to recognize those things and look for those those keywords so they know what I'm expecting them to do each time. Um, if I come up here and edit this table, I can go to source code. I can copy the source code. Benny, when you have and a question, it looks like there's a couple of questions that have come oh, in, by the way. Oh, okay. I will go to those questions, and then I can come back to this if they want me to. Big blue button. Uh, so really, your students only have to work through the lessons pages? Yes. Exactly. That's one-stop shopping, without a doubt. The students really have evaluated us highly on this in our end of course evaluation since we started using tools. Um, Yes, with the navigation tools, um, we have requested that they all have forums, assignments. We specify some of the tools. Now, individual instructors can add different tools if they would like. One of the things that I have done, if you will know this page, forums and assignments is grayed out and kind of in italics. My students can't see the term forum and assignment. They have to get it from the lessons tool. We had a bit of a problem with students that had had classes prior to lessons and now are doing the lessons, using the lessons uh, format. So uh, uh, two of my instructors and I both gray out forms and assignments, so they have to go to the weekly lesson. That way, if there are any announcements or anything, they have to see that. 
I'm interested in your templates. I would really like to see us have some possible lesson templates that we could then be able to put things in. Um, I, I, I am not a programmer. I do not do HTML. So that is, that is a weakness that I have. But uh, I would certainly love if the community could come together and come up with some lesson templates that we could go out and pull from that then we would just need to, like I have to retype assignments and, and forums each week. There's a comment. Let's see. Oh, I, it's, um, yes, I, I use that. My students seem to really like that. If I make a mistake, they usually let me know very quickly. You're an awful quiet bunch. Yes. Uh, the resources tool. Oh, I didn't see that question. I'm sorry. Do I hide the resources tool? No, I normally do not hide the resources tool. But the students that I have now that have always done the lessons, they don't use the resources tool. They just go to the lesson. Any other questions? or comments. This is a bird's of the feather. What about the rest of you? What do you use the lessons tool for in your courses? Okay, no comments, no questions, mainly the main course content, yes. Are any of you using it as, um, oh, thanks, Regina. Sure. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Chuck, how are you? This is Tony DeVore, and we were at the LAMP camp together this summer. Our version of Sakai is hosted by LAMP, which is a consortium, and we were lucky enough to have uh, Chuck join us this summer at the workshop. LAMP Camp is a wonderful opportunity for us, and we certainly enjoy it and learn a lot. I can't hear anybody. Chuck, you look like you're muted. Um, let me see if I can unmute you. Hmm. Not working. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Go. No, I, 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 I use lessons very, very mildly, and so I'm just looking for best practice from people who think more deeply about this than me. So I'll go back on mute and listen. <laughs> Gee, thanks. All right. Anybody else? Would somebody like to see how I copy the little table and then put it into another lesson? Another instance of a lesson. I have not used the peer assessment. That it was a new tool for us this summer, and I just haven't explored it enough uh, to use it. Okay, some uh, Regina is still on an older version of Sakai. Um, I just haven't explored it. I teach um, uh, an undergraduate class, and this in the spring and. We're going to use that tool in that class. So I can learn how to use it, and they will. Silence makes me nervous. <laughs> Neil, do you have anything to add? Oh, how do I deal with due dates? Due dates on assignments, I use it a couple different ways. I will go back to Sakai and bring up, um, let's see which class I'm in. I'm in, I'm in a current class. I will uh, pull up assignments and just show you, pick an assignment and show you uh, what I have done. Uh, the resource class, um, 
and I'll just use the IRB one. I will do edit on this. And basically what I do is I, I have a open date, and it's usually the beginning of that week. Sometimes near holidays or um, since most of my students are actually teachers in the school systems uh, in our area, I will set up a assignments sometimes a week or two weeks early, knowing that there are certain things that are going on in the schools and they may not have as much time. So some of my assignments may be visible prior to um, the actual uh, week that they're going to be on the the, the assignment pages. Um, but the due date was 929. Now, I don't close my assignments a week later. I actually leave them open through the end of the semester. That's my only, uh, that's my preference, but when, and I won't go to the, uh, the page that shows the students' work, because those are, these are current students, but it will tell me if they've turned the assignment in late, and then I have a policy about late assignments. But that's how I set up my assignments. Yes, they only see the list of assignments. Sometimes on the page I will I will indicate when it's due if it's if it's an assignment that I've given early that's going to be due two or three weeks later. And also I put it in the little uh, box when the assignments are due. There is no due date written in lesson. I, my due date is in the little box generally that I have at the top, and then as soon as they go to the assignment, then they see the due date. Most of my assignments also, we kind of have a policy, not policy, a procedure that an assignment made this week will be due Monday at midnight of the following week. Unless that changes, I always put it in the box, but they also, that's our, our yes, I publish a separate page. I publish a separate page with for each lesson. Let me go back to a lesson so you can see. I'll just go to September the 8th. This is a current one. Here's my little box at the top of my lesson page that tells what they need to do, when it's due, etc. Uh, the reading log is something that's due in the future. Uh, they can see that. I have the informants. Uh, I'm sorry. I have the forums, and then I have the assessments, the assignments, and um, for the students to go from there. Did that answer your question? I'm sorry, show what again? The table that I put in? Talk if you want. Talking is good. Yeah. I, I do have a couple questions also um, after you answer this one. Okay, let me answer Regina. Um, I usually try to have all of my lessons not done but pretty well completed prior to the class opening. And no, I don't always release them all at the same time. Um, I find then that if I do that, some students will work ahead and they're not really a part of the conversation. I try to at least have one week or two weeks ahead of time for certain for the reasons I've mentioned earlier, because teachers are very busy people and, and these people have, for the most part, a, 40 hour a week job plus doing the graduate work and usually they're taking two classes so I usually try and have the current week and the next week visible to them so that they can see those. Uh, I have a couple assignments that are ongoing that last about three weeks and I will open all three of those at the same time so that they can as they get their work in they can move on to the next assignment if they need to. Okay go ahead Neil. Yeah, so I'm curious, Tony, um, how you find, you know, get, as an instructor, how you found getting started with lessons and 
uh, discovering its new features? Do you find it fairly intuitive? Uh, oh, without a doubt. Um, of one of our adjuncts for the graduate program is Robin Buchanan from Lee's McRae. And when the lessons tool came out, she's very innovative and, and a real go-getter, and she had it in her classes. And when I, I looked at her classes, I was – Horribly embarrassed that mine didn't look as nice as hers. And as I really learned from her how she used lessons. And then as soon as I started, I thought, well, we all have to do this. So it has been very, I find I think like lessons, apparently. Um, I really enjoy the structure, but then I also enjoy the fact that I can do different things with it. And I especially like the add student comment or the comments tool. Those little things I can get a real quick read on what's going on or those types of things. And having the students put content on, believe me, they they were anxious to begin with. And then after they did it once, it was like, oh, well, that's that's easy. I don't have to worry about this anymore. So I really I really find that I gravitate to using the lessons tool for everything. And that's why I've started using it in my face to face classes as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, you Anything know, else? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to mention to the folks on the call, maybe not everybody is familiar with the birds of a feather concept, you know, that occurs to me is that the idea of a birds of a feather is like a peer group that's having a discussion, and usually one person sort of kicks it off and, and moderates. So that might be where I'm not sure if everyone has that same expectation. They might be thinking of a more like a 30-minute presentation and a little bit of QA, and a birds of a feather is more like, a little bit of information here and there to get the discussion going. So it's really about the people on the call and kind of what your needs are, what you're hoping to get out of um, lessons. And with either you would like to contribute to others that you've done with it or some questions you might have that the group can answer so it doesn't have to be just Tony answering. By all means. Oh, while we're waiting, yeah, I'm also curious, like, are, are, there, are there kinds of engagements with your students that you um, are hoping that lessons can do for you, but you haven't had a chance yet to, to explore, um, you know, how to do that? Um, I'm sure there are, but right off the top of my head, I, I would really like to have an assessment tool that multiple instructors could use so that on my capstone projects, it would be nice to have two or three people assess that project using a common rubric that would be available through the lessons, through the lessons, so that I could put two other instructors in my class and they could go through and we could do, we could, you know, have a look at major assignments or capstone projects, et cetera, and have them scored by two or three people. I just think that would be that would really help. I, it wouldn't be engagement with the student, but it would give them an opportunity to share what they're they're doing with other instructors. How are how are other people on the call using the lessons tool? Are you using it the same way as Tony, or are you uh, you know, using it in a different way? I mean, I noticed that that uh, for some of you, you're looking at maybe moving off of a different tool into lessons and getting a little bit more orientation on it or learning to use lessons tool more completely and understanding what it can do. Um, anyone using it in a different way that they'd like to share? Zayad has his hand up. Go ahead, Zayad. If you have your hand up, go ahead. And you're welcome to either chat or you can just speak. You sh oh, I don't see a little uh, speaker near you. Oh, so no microphone. Did he ask a question that I missed? Yeah, can he, can can you guys hear me? Certainly. Yeah. Okay, this is this is Ziad actually. Uh, Ziad, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, the reason why I was asking the question about the dates and whether you are hiding the resources tool or not or the assignment tool is my goal actually is to create a a template that actually can be transported from one site to another with the minimum need that individual uh, faculty need to modify its content, the content of the pages, you know? So sure. that's why I asked ask about the due dates. I don't want 
the faculty to go to individual lesson pages and then change those dates every semester. I need these dates to be somewhere else where they can change the assignments, for example, or have them written in a separate page, maybe a PDF file or somewhere, without touching the lessons themselves, you know? I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I import my classes, like um, the next time I teach 645, I will import this version of 645. But yes, I do have to go back in and uh, tweak each lesson page and alter the due dates. Um, I see your, your issue, and I think we've talked about this in some sessions I've been in in the past. Um, that would be a nice feature. I'm not sure how it would work, though. Yeah, well, I'm still struggling with that particular issue, how, how to make a standardized design in this way, you know, because we have a specific person who developed the course. Then we yes. can roll yeah. out that course to other people and other adjunct faculty to just teach it. They can teach it in their own style, but the content, we don't want people to change the content, you know. I understand. Johnson University does something like that. Um, David Eveland is at Johnson. Um, and he does a really good job. I'm not sure if he would be a good contact for you or not. Which university is that? It's Johnson University, and his name is David Eveland. You okay, might check it. out the web page and see if you can't get a hold of him. I don't have his email address handy or I'd share it. Okay, I'll, I'll find it. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Laura and Megan, you have microphones. Tell us how you're using lessons tool or a question, if you would, please. Any other questions or comments? That, that was a great overview. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Have I had any issues when importing lessons? No, I have not. Um, the one, it's not really an issue. It's, um, I don't know what to call it. It's a thing. When I've imported a class into, a, you know, my lessons into different classes, into a new class, the forums are visible. If I, if I click on them and put them in the, you know, if they're, are they're already there, everything works okay. But the dates that I created them and the date they're due, even though that doesn't seem to be an issue in getting into it, it shows up on the grade book that it's not due. And then students, if they go to the grade book, they say, oh, well, I don't have to do that for them. It's not due, rather than looking at the lesson page. So the lesson page, the, the forums, the lesson page, and the grade book, there's something going on there, and I'm not exactly sure what it is yet. But I will figure it out. That's the only issue I've had. And sometimes assignments will say deleted. Not always, but it seems like I have to go back in and do the dates on the assignments. So um, I'm going to say, is it Ziad? I hope I'm saying it right this time. Uh, that's, that would probably be the issue that you're having as well. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, they do. We have about uh, just a little less than five minutes, by the way. So uh, we we'll probably can talk about We'll have to wrap up. You're getting a bit of an echo there. Thank you. Thank you. External link. What type of What type of external link? Oh, oh, there's a question for me about uh, peer assessment and assignments. I'm not as familiar with uh, the peer assessment in uh, in lessons, um, but I can say the kind of the way the peer assessment and assignments. I don't know if any of you are familiar with MOOCs, uh, massive open online courses, uh, but it's a common 
what we have in Sakai for peer assessment is common is similar to that model, which is that you have students um, submit their assignment, and you, as an instructor, you specifically say this is going to be a peer assignment, and then uh, and how many other students that student's going to each student's going to going to grade, and you could put in a rubric for the students to look at if you choose or other types of instructions, and uh -huh. then when you, after you submit your assignment as a, as a student. You then have the opportunity uh, when the grading starts to go and look at other students' uh, work, and um, you know apply that rubric or apply, apply those instructions to figure out what what grade you would give to that student. And then it uh, Sakai automatically averages the grades together and then presents that to the along with the comments that you make as a student. So you're both going to have the assignment that you've done as a student as well as the comments that you've put against other students' work. And the instructor can see all of that, and they can, um, you know, make a determination about uh, the final grade. They can adjust it or, or take that peer peer grade and all that to stay in the grade book. So it's a really great way to get, you know, students thinking like an instructor. Sounds good. Yeah, it's a really great feature. It started in uh, Sakai 10. Yelena, you say, question, using import from site, merge my data, duplicates the lesson tabs instead of combining them. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Are you still there? She must be gone. No, she's still there. It said she's still oh. yes in the chat window. Oh, okay. By the way, it looks like we have about one minute, one minute left, so we're going to have to really wrap up here. Well, um, I certainly appreciate all of you joining us. Hello? Hello? About Hello, that. Yelena? Yes, yes, it's me. Hi. Um, yes, I had a question about that uh, um, course content. Um, you know, when I'm bringing over and using the merging tool, I yes. notice that if I have created lessons in in one course and in the destination course, I also have lessons. Uh, the con, you know, yes. even though the lesson has exactly the tab has exactly the same name, mm -hmm. I would be expecting to uh, the content of that lesson to be combined with what I'm bringing over instead of just creating another lesson tab. Um, yeah, it just brings it over. Yeah, it just brings right. over the old lesson. You're so correct. What is the best practice of combining two, uh, you know, the, combining same lessons from different uh, courses? Meaning, like, if one has a little bit more information and the other one is still. Mm. I usually don't put any new lesson tools, new lesson pages in my new classes. I just bring them over and then modify them from there. Um, I'm not sure I can help you with that one. I might have to think on that one a little longer. I think we're probably almost out of time. Neil? Okay, sure. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, uh, that was uh, the last question. We're out of time. We're trying to keep to a good timeline today. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Tony. I thought you did a, did a great job of uh, giving an overview of the lessons tool and you know, initiating the conversation. And thank you, everyone, for participating. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Remember, the next session is the keynote, so make sure to go back to the Tri Sakai site and click on the link to get to the, uh, the keynote. <laughs> right, take care, everybody. <laughs>